well. Amen. If not, we pray that today's message will encourage you, amen, in some form or fashion to lift your spirits and to give you the confidence and the faith to move forward in this life. Our devotion today is coming out of Isaiah, the 50th chapter, verses 10 and verse 11. As we began to read today, amen, we, we uh, look at that 10th verse of Isaiah, and it says, Isaiah, the 50th chapter, who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Look all you who kindle a fire, who encircles yourselves with sparks and walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks you have kindled. This you shall have more from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. This passage of scripture speaks to the life that we live. When it talks about the light that is being lit and man lights of light and the sparks from what he does, he live in. He goes about doing what he wants to do because this is the fire or the light that he has put together. Amen. And we discover that when once we try to create our own light, our own fire, our own guidance, then what happens is we get in trouble. And a lot of us in our world today are experiencing so many hardships because we have built our own fire. We want to go our way or we want to follow the, the ways of the flesh as we move forward uh, in our lives. God says uh, at the beginning, he said, who is this person that is trying to live this life and has no guidance, has no light? God wants all of us to have the light and that light is the light of his word. It's the same light that guided the children of Israel for 40, 40 years into the, the wilderness. It was that same guided light of his word. When we speak about the light, we think of something that is constant because light is pure. We are here today because of the constant light or constant word of God. Our lives should be guided by the light, his word. Our hearts should be lifted and, and, and have complete intimacy with God through his word. That's the light that we, well, if we don't have that light, we are in a darkened state of mind. Amen. We could be still living and that we can have a good job and we can be doing all the things that we're not bothering nobody, not talking about nobody. We can be free from any anxiety and still not have God's light. You can go to hell being good, and so to speak. Amen. Because what God wants is not for you to create your own light. God wants you to follow the guidance that he has provided for us through his word. We fall most time because of the lack of knowledge of his word. Our desire as true believers of God is to live the life holy in perspective of what God has already prescribed for us. The word of God is just like that. And People got all kinds of excuses of why we ain't going to study. And so, well, what Bible should we use? It's not really but one Bible, the Word of God, one Bible. Man have made different versions of the one Bible. Well, Pastor Smith, what is that Bible? The Bible that you're going to read, that's the best 
Bible. That's the best version that you uh, that you will basically have for your life is the Bible that you're going to read, the one that you can understand and then seek guidance for when you read something that you might be having trouble with. The word of God is powerful enough to lead you and guide you to, your, to the understanding of divine power. God don't ever want you to go out and create your own Bible, create your own word, establish your own faith. Amen. He never wanted that. He wanted you to receive and accept and embrace what he has already provided for us. Amen. So don't go create your own fire. Amen. You're going to find yourself left in the cold. You don't have enough fuel to keep that fire going. But I've discovered that through the word of God, God's word is a fire and God's word is a hammer that breaks the rocks all into the pieces. Amen. So we must trust God even when we can't trace God. We must see him for who he really is. And the only way to know God is through the study and knowledge of his word. I tell people most of the time, if you're going to start reading and study the Bible, one of the things that you need to do is get familiar with the Bible. Go to the book of John, read the book of John seven consecutive times. After you have read it seven consecutive times, then you start a complete study on the word of God. Find out where Christ is. Find out what this miracle means. Everything that Christ does in scripture Amen. It's for our own good and for our purpose and for our knowledge and for our will. So when we study the word of God and we see the light that is before us, I promise you, you will come out of your darkened state into the marvelous light that God has provided for us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, we humble ourselves before you this day, and we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for the light that you have provided for us today. Thank you for the love and the grace and the wisdom and the knowledge that only you can provide. We pray right now, Father, for our parishioners who are here today, and we thank you for their safe arrival. Thank you for those who are yet on their way, and we pray, Father, for your continued uh, uh, blessings and safety as they make their way here to church here on this morning. We pray for their strength right now. We pray for their families. We pray for their jobs and their situation, their bosses and their co-workers, everybody that is connected with them. We pray, Father, for their purpose to be received and accepted in this world. And even if it's not, Lord, we pray that you would give them standing power to stand in the midst of their storms. Strength, Father, in the midst of their weakness, Father. Give them the things that they need one day at a time. Marvelous Father is your name. Marvelous Father is your work. Marvelous Father in the hands and the hearts that you have opened up to know your will, your way, and your power. We pray our blessings upon the historical First Baptist Church. And during the time of this pandemic, we pray right now, Father, for our government and the system. We pray for our president, his cabinet. Father, we even pray for our mayors and our governors, amen, and all of our statesmen and state women, amen, who are making the laws here in this world. But Father, you are the creator and maker of all things. You sit high and look low. There's no law that man can make that can stop your hands, stop your power, or bind your heart and mind. Father, thank you for waking us this morning. Thank you for giving us a good and past week, Father. You allowed us to get through it, Father, through the rain, Father, and through all the anguish that we may have faced, Father. Here we sit on another brand new Sunday morning, and we bring glory and honor and praise to your name, Father. Blessing belongs to you, Father. Blessings belong to you, and thank you for sharing the blessings in with us on this morning. Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in our sight, Lord. 
our strength, your strength, and our, and, and you're truly our, our redeemer. We pray right now, Father, for the clarity and the simplicity of the wisdom and knowledge that only you can provide. Teach us to pray. Teach us to number our days. Show us, Father, where you would want us to be. And most of all, Father, give us the light that shines in the midst of the darkest of days and the darkest of night. Regardless of what is going on in our lives, Father, give us strength and power to shine for you. Father, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine all over this world. Lord, let it shine. Wherever I go, let it shine. The word of God belongs to you, Father. Help us to receive that word, give forth and testimony of that word that there is a living and true God that sits high and looks low. Thank you for all you will do. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. Bless his name in this house today. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God bless you. This morning's message, amen, is centered around, amen, some things that I think that will be very helpful to you as we move forward in this pandemic. There are so many things in our lives, amen, that we carry with and we tote every day. And you know, the, qu the question can always be asked, uh, uh, what is it the Christian supposed to be doing during this particular time? With all the stuff that's happening, amen, and with all the things that are going on, all the negative talk, amen. I think we should have what we call some voting sense. And I'm not talking about, uh, you ought to go vote, but notice the things that are happening in our world. They're talking bad about the post office. They're talking bad about, uh, the candidates are talking bad about one another and everything. But regardless to what is said and regardless to the rain, regardless to the storms or regardless to COVID, guess what? We still going to be voting. You see, and, 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 and I look at it from that standpoint. It doesn't matter what's going on in the Christian's life right now. The main thing that we should be doing is still having a faithful testimony that Jesus Christ is alive in world, work well in our souls. In other words, we ought to still be shining. Amen. This is a cruel world. This is a mean world. This is a darkened world. But the Christians still should be shining. And we should be shining. Amen. Matthew, the fifth chapter, uh, verses 14 through 16 for our reading. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do, do they light a lamp and and put it under a basket or bushel, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. If we learn to trust God, in the midst of all that we do, we will recognize that the love that God gives, just like light, does not have to be shaken in order to be seen. Nobody has to make you shine as a true believer because what Christ did for us in our life is that he purchased the light and then he shares that light with us because all light has to do is just shine, shine, shine. That's all light has to do. And that's what God wants us to do. God says, don't be deterred by the things that are around you in your life. Just shine. Be the best Christian that you possibly can be. One thing that I've learned about Christianity is this, is that God has never changed a man who you are. Amen. He may have changed some of the rudiments of what you did because you were in the flesh. But when God saves you, your character and everything about you are still the same. 
Notice God never tells us after he saves us that he wants us to be like somebody else. God wants you to be just like you. Satan really wants you not to like yourself. He wants you to get confused about yourself. He wants you to believe that you were created and made for some alternative motive other than what God has deemed you for. But you are who you are. You are who you are. And guess what? There's nobody in this world that is created and made like you. The Bible said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us with a purpose. There's a purpose in mind for you to exist here. And one of the major purpose in our lives today is for us to what? Shine. Say it with me. Shine. Your purpose is to shine. Who are you to shine for? You're to shine for Christ. Out of your character, out of who you are, there are places that you have been that I never go. There are people that you will see and have conversations that your pastor will never have conversation with. But because God has deemed you purposeful in this life, your life means something to God, meaning that you are an extension of that light. Because how many people in here have ever met somebody that is lower than yourself? that is having a worse day than you had, that, ha I mean, that, that, that seemed to be in a darkened state all the time, always complaining, always got something negative to say. Anybody has ever been around people like that? Amen. And so God has allowed you to meet these people for what reason? That you might shine a little light on their scene. Amen. The pastor is not necessarily support. I'm your pastor, but I'm not the one that that that's gonna follow you wherever you go. And you need a word of God. You just can't pick the phone up and say, "Well, pastor, uh, I need a word for this situation right here. I got a lady in front of me that don't seem to. Uh, she she's in a darkened state. What what can I do? Well, that's not what pastors are for. See, you are saved for a purpose. You are to be fit. Amen of service for God because you're going to be in situations and places that your church, your pastor will never be in, but you ought to have something on the inside that shines forth to bring light on the scene. Number one, amen. In, in verse 15 of this text, we learn more so than anything is that we learn the who, the what, and the why of why Jesus is telling a group of individuals that we need to shine and we need to discuss. And he says, how, do we, how are we supposed to shine? As I bring some information to you so that you can be able to understand that in our life, there are so many things going on that you must grab hold to this knowledge and know that your purpose in life is to shine. Uh, and you may not know that, amen, because God has given us that light. And he is, as the Bible says, he is the light of the world. And we are placed in this life that we may bring light to this world's darkened state, amen. Number one, we ought to shine publicly, amen. I, and, and notice what verse 14 says. It says, you are the light of God. What? The world. And you are what? A city that is set on the hill that cannot be what? Amen. So if God has given us light and we look and see who God is talking to, first of all, Christ, this is part of Christ's uh, beatitude message, one of his first messages that he preaches. And as he preaches, he, he goes through the Beatitudes and after he leaves the Beatitude, he begins to address the crowd. He's not just talking to disciples. He's talking to uh, Galileans. He's talking to who's ever sitting around him that is connected to the faith. If Christ is light and he's the light of the world and we have been saved by that light, can we say that light resides in us? Yes, if that light resides 
in us, then that light should not be hidden. Amen. Folks around us should know that we say. Folks around us should know that we are living testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Have I got some help in the house? We shouldn't hide our light, amen. You shouldn't just shine your light here in the church sanctuary and leave out of here and put your light out because you get with a group of folk who don't know your Jesus. It's your, it's your, your committed effort to make sure that Jesus Christ shines within your life. I used to think that if I try to witness to people, they won't, won't like me, amen. They'll think I'm one of those religious fanatics. But I didn't got to a sense now with our world where people are being killed every day, lives are being lost every day. We get up in the morning, we put our clothes on, we get jobs, we get in our cars, and we're not even thinking that it could be our last day. Our last moment, amen. So what are you going to do, amen, if God calls you home, amen, and you have not witnessed for him since you've been saved? Don't go and meet God without doing your God level best is to shine publicly, amen. Not just shine publicly, but we ought to shine privately. I want to know if is your, is your private more holy than your public? That's important, Smith, because of the fact is that I, we can get a whole lot of folk, amen, to talk publicly because they want to be seen. But when they get in private, amen, they act like they ain't never heard God. But a lot of times people want to show off for other people. Don't be a show off Christian, amen, but be a show up Christian. Because if we show up, amen, people know that your life, amen, is not just openly amen but you ought to have a saved life privately amen notice here in verse 15 what it says it says and it gives light to all who is where in the house private amen so i ought to be able to be pastor at the house i ought to be able to live a life at home in my private that my children and my, my family, that they know that I am a born-again child of God because I live the life, amen, that I'm preaching about. My daughter is there, and, 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 and look, and, and I believe that because she is so outspoken that if I live my life differently than what I'm preaching, I believe my daughter would tell me, Dad, you, you, you preach all this good stuff at church, but you know, at home, you know, you cussing and you drinking beer and, and you doing all kinds, you treat mama so bad and all this stuff. I believe my daughter would tell me that. Your private should be just as holy as your public. And now what I'm saying to you that God has placed us here to shine. Shine publicly, shine privately, and then shine purposely. Amen. I'm saved on purpose. Nobody made me get saved. I don't, I, I, uh, when I started off at the age of 12 years old, when I got baptized, amen, you know I had to be made by mama. You going to revival, you getting on the morning bench, and you sitting there, and I tell you all the time about the uh, pastor where he preached that sermon, and he hollers loud. He had a big black robe, and he flew down. Lord have mercy. When he get happy, he stopped that uh, robe look like a big old black crow coming down and scare you half to death, amen, and I jumped off, and I, my friend, he came off, my, my partner, they came off, and I came off the morning bench just like them, and everybody was happy and everything, and again, I don't know if I was truly saved then, but I was following what we call the traditions of the church, and as a 12-year-old Boy, I didn't have all the understanding. But one of the things that my mom did and my grandmother did, she kept us in church. We went to Sunday school. We went to different classes. We learned. We learned Bible drill. We learned our lessons. And we did all of these things. And mom kept us in the church. Amen. In some kind of way, amen, the spirit of God intervened into my heart where I began to understand the wisdom and knowledge of God and then know that God picked me. 
Just like, oh Lord have mercy, just like a little boy standing at the, at the basketball court, amen, and he walks up and says, I got a down, amen, and Lord have mercy that somebody picked me, amen, to go with them. And then you know what? And I'm glad that through this world that God has picked me out of anybody that he could have picked. At this time, at the age of 57, I want to be able to tell you I'm glad that God picked me. Amen. Why? Because he picked you purposefully to do what? To glorify the, your God in heaven. That's why you are picked. That's why you are saved. If you are saved, God picked you, meaning that he adopted you, meaning that there was nothing on your, in your record, amen, that tells God that he should pick you. But it was something on his record because he loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, and God said, I give my son that you might be on my team. I hope you're on God's team today. I hope you believe, amen, that what God is doing in your life, even in the midst of what you're going through, that you can sign for God purposely, amen. What light accomplishes in the world, we need to understand, is not the who. The who is the you. That's who God is talking to. He said, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Okay? That's the who. That's you. You are a workman for God. I got to get it home to you because you, you're not really hearing me. I said, you, he's talking to you, that you are to shine. Now catch this. And you are to shine in whatever storm come your way. You are to shine to whatever sickness come your way. You are to shine regardless to what's happening in your personal life. God says you are to shine. Why? Because Christ said I did it. I shine when they put nails in my hands. I shine when they put rivets in my feet. I shine when they put a crown of thorn on my head. I shine when they pierce me in the side. I shine. Come here, come here, Joe. It was the devil that challenged, challenged Joe, challenged God to tell God, God, the reason Job loved you like he loved you is because you've given him everything. And I tell you this, God, if you move the hedge from around Job, I'll make Job cuss you to your face. And God said, really? I will remove the hedge. God takes the hedge. He moves the hedge. And all, all of Job's children died. Have I got some help? Everything that Job had, he lost. You see what I'm saying? Satan even has people that give the testimony. You know, Satan won't take all, but he'll take enough and leave one somebody to tell the story. And every time that something happened to Job, that was a servant running. And said, Job, all your cattle did. A whirlwind came in and killed and took everything. Your livestock and everything is gone. And I want you to know, Satan wants to be a testimony on your failed purposes. Have you ever failed God? Have you ever let God down? Isn't it time that we start paying God back? Because even after we have let God down, he still show forth the grace and mercy. We got people that all they want to do is build their stuff, but never want to shine and build for God. If I'm going to build something, you better believe whatever I build is going to include God. If I'm going to do something in this life, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it for God. 
to bring glory and honor to his name. Are you living to bring glory and honor to his name or are you living to gain more? Because everything that you gain, you're going to lose. The Bible teaches us, amen, that this word, this word is the only thing that will not pass away. And if the word is the only thing that won't pass away, look like to me, we ought to be getting the word of God, learning the word of God, and making the word of God purposeful to our own life. So we know the who Christ is talking to when he says, let your light shine. But what does the light accomplish in the world? I tell you, what light does, it dispels the darkness. It dispels the darkness. You are not always live in ignorance. Preach Reverend Smith. Ignorance is just saying, I don't know. And many children today and adults even today utilize this little phrase, I don't know, thinking that it will keep them from being responsible for the things that God has told you to do. It's our desire to learn what God has told us to do. We are not always being darkness, amen, because we know that if we have the light, the light brings, amen, pushes darkness aside. It brings clarity, and then it brings wisdom and knowledge when we have the light of God's word. See, a lot of times we think it's not about, you, you got these preachers and you got these, uh, uh, all these evangelists, and they, they love quoting scriptures that sound good. But to see, it's not about quoting. It's really about living scripture. Because if you can live what you believe, Amen. If you live what you believe, then you don't ever have to try to prove to folk that you got God. Have I got some help in here? Because when you try to prove to folk that I'm saved, I'm sanctified, you don't have to do that. You prove folk to by the way you live. What do you do to a light? You let it shine. You don't have to shake it to make it shine. If you're the part of Christ's team and you're supposed to be light, put light on the scene. You know, people say, you always got something positive to say, like that's negative. Because I'm a light. You ought to be a light. And when dark situations come your way, you ought not stay in the dark. You ought to turn the light on. Now touch yourself if you don't mind. Sell. Let me see everybody touch this chair. Say, yeah. turn the light on. That's all you have to do. Christ says, I'm the light of the world. If you're in a darkened situation, turn his light on. If you don't understand something, turn his light on. If you need clarity, turn his light on. His light is the light of the world. Light dispels the darkness. And light discovers the dangers. It exposes. A lot of times in our relationships, if you're dating somebody, man, turn, turn the light on. What do you mean? Start talking about Jesus. That's your light. And see how they respond. I love these guys. That, you know, I, I, I thank God for the ladies who, 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 who called me and said, Pastor Smith, I want you to meet this young man. So I'd be glad to meet him. And I don't beat him up or anything like that, but I just start talking and I'm seeing how he talk. And then I ask him, I say, are you saved? Guess what he said? I go to church. See, he, he think automatically that being saved means you go to church. Now, if you save, you ought to go to church. But church is not where all saved folk are. There are some saved folk that can't get to church, but they at work, but they still saved. See, so, so your salvation is not so much a place as it is your heart. Preach, Reverend Smith. Because if your heart is right, you will say wherever you go. And if you know the person that pays your light bill, preach, Reverend Smith. If you know the person that pays your light bill, you will shine light on a darkened situation. You are not fool with folk that's going to be intimate with you and you don't share the life and the life 
that you love is important. Why is it important? It's important because we ought to be shining for God. And a lot of times that we can't shine is because we have run with the darkened crowd. Amen. And not only that, our light is still shining, but because we are encased in sin, our light is not as bright as it need to be. Amen. We have darkened light. Amen. We have darkened light. I did say that. Light that is dim because we have darkened and tampered with our testimony. Light only not exposes and uncovers, but light determines our direction. If you don't mind, let's go to Philippians 2, 15 and 16, and we'll read part. It says this, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault. Y'all see that? In the midst of a crooked and perverse Generation, I told you this is a cruel world. My God, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. That's what we have, light and life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run this race in vain or labored in vain. Some of us hadn't even got tired yet because we hadn't been running. And it's time that we get in the hurry as believers to make sure that people know whose side we're on. It's time out for trying to persuade people at funerals that God is who he say he is. Because what it is is because we dumb down the word of God and the, and, and the, the effectiveness of the word of God because people are not listening. A lot of times we just want to be heard at a funeral. We want to have good talk at a funeral. But I don't, I don't know too many people that come back and remember what is said about Jesus Christ from a funeral. The key thing is that we must seek the Lord where he may be found. And we must call upon him while he is near. Because there's going to be a time when you seek him and you can't find him. But this pandemic is not there. It's not one of the things where you can't find God. Because God is around every day. You still looking at me. I'm still looking at you. God is still on the throne. He is still busy in our life doing the things that he said that he would do. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, Smith, I'm with you always. All you need to do is I need to know, are you with me? I give you breath last night when you didn't even know you was in the world. And right early this morning, I touched you with the finger of love and your eyes came over. Smith, you didn't have anything to do with that. Black Lives Matter didn't have anything to do with that. But late last night, when I allowed a hush to come over your life, and I made sure that nobody broke in and bothered you, and I kept you in the hollow of my hand, and you might have had a headache last night, but I rocked you to sleep. And you don't even know what time you went to sleep, but I made sure that everything was all right at your house. I didn't let nobody come in and bother you. The alarms didn't go off. Nobody broke in. But look at you this morning. Hadn't he been good to you? You still got your mind. I got a mind that has stayed on Jesus. I'm, my heart is fixed. And then my mind is made up because I'm holding fast to the word of life. Are you holding fast? To the word of life, I am. I'm hoping that God will touch our lives so much that we can shine. Light is the forerunner that blazes the trail through any darkness. That's the light that we have in Jesus Christ. No, no, it's, I, I'm not saying, li, listen, I'm not trying to give you a cliche. And I'm not trying to give you something that, that you can just remember. This is something that you got to know. You got to know that Christ is in your heart. You got to know beyond any shout or doubt. You got to know that the Christ that I'm believing is, is the be beginner of life. 
It's the beginning of life. See, you can take this Bible and you can throw it across the field now because you didn't mess around and let that Bible get in me. And once that Bible gets in you, then it doesn't matter what men do with the Bible. It doesn't matter what they do with the Bible because the word of God is in you. And if you are obeying the word of God, then you are shining. You are shining. In order for us to shine, we must get outside into the world. What good is shining in here? Well, everybody got it. But God has placed us in strategic places. Even if you are incarcerated, God is telling you to shine. Do you know God got, got men and women that are saved in jail? They are saved in jail. And God is saying to them, shine for me where you are. Trust me in the midst of the incarceration. Your sin may have gotten you in, but Christ has gotten you out. And if you are saved in your heart, you ought to be making some sounds for the Lord. Amen. There are a lot of things I want in life. But the stuff that I want in life, I got to make sure that God is tied to it. Because if God is not tied to the things of the life in this life that I want, then I'm leaving God out. I want God in every corner of my life. Let me ask you this question. Is there a room in your life that you don't want God to go in? Let me tell you, he already there because we serve a living God. He already know about it. Is there a sacred secret that you are holding within yourself that you said that you would, leave, you would die before you tell anybody? Well, let me tell you, honey, baby child, brother, let me tell you, he already know. He already know your story. Huh? He trust, and I like it because he don't tell nobody. Yeah. Not only do he, he, he might tell somebody that he might be able to help you. That's why I could be moved. The Lord said, I need you to speak this to this lady right here. I don't know this lady, but the Lord know what she's going through. So I need you to say this to her. I need you to say this to her. I need you to tell this brother right here that his life it's not going to fare well until he put God in his well. There are things. So I live a life where I'm waiting to be used of God. And you better believe he's always talking to me. And since I got connected with him, all I want to do is shine. All I want to do is shine for Jesus. In order for us to shine, we must get outside. We must Touch bases with people, amen, other than people that we know. White, black, that's why it's not just good to be a black Christian. You ought to meet some white Christian. Huh? You ought to meet some Chinese Christian. Huh? You ought to meet, meet some Christian from Pampanga. You ought to meet, I mean, you ought to meet, don't, don't be so connected to just one. You don't know where God can use you. And let me tell you this. You don't know where your blessings are come. You can't segregate yourself from the world. God said, I'm placing you in the world. And did not he tell his disciples that I'm sending you out among wolves? Didn't he say that? He know what the world entices. He know what the world is into. He knows all of this. God got people working everywhere. All he wants us to do is shine. In this pandemic, can you shine? Can you shine? Can you give God the glory? Because he knows your story. Number one, amen, I need you to grab hold to this. Amen. It's foolish to conceal your life. It's foolish to conceal your life. It's foolish for you to claim that you are saved, you are sanctified, you're filled with the precious Holy Ghost, and you love God and all of these things that we do within the church, but then you don't tell nobody. It's foolish for us not to share God's gospel. It's foolish for us 
not to give forth the knowledge of God. It's foolish that you got power to help deliver folk, but you won't give it to them when they need it. Concealed light. Look at verse 14 and 15. Amen. It's right there. It's foolish to conceal your light because you don't allow your living. <clears throat> don't allow your living to hide your light. I'm saying it for, with a purpose. Don't allow your living. Don't allow what you do to stop your light from shining. While we're working to try to make a living and you won't include Christ in your living, your living has become a hindrance to the life. Why would God bless you with a decent job and then you don't take God to the job with you? Don't tell me that we're not allowed to read Bibles at work. I don't care what you said. The Bible is in you. The principle of God's word is not just standing up reading scriptures, but there's a principle behind what is in the scripture that helps us to live life. I take the Bible with me every day I go to work. But I'm careful. Don't cast your pearls to swine. When I see folk making jokes about God, making jokes about the preacher, making jokes about the church, do you think that that's a place for me to try to get that person saved? No. That's casting pearls into swine. But when I see somebody that's in my, in, in, in my, in my realm that is struggling with life, regardless to who they may be, and you catch them aside, like Jesus did with the woman at the well? Imagine if Jesus and that woman met in the middle of town. Imagine what the town folk would have done to Jesus. They probably would have run him out. And you claim you are, you are Messiah and you doing all this. But Jesus said, I must need go to Samaria, meet this woman by herself at the well because nobody deemed her purposeful. But Jesus did. He said, I must need go. And there may be somebody in your family, in your life, centered around you that need somebody to come by their street and just share a kind word. Because when we shine for God, things get better for us. Not only do we allow, don't allow your living to shine for your life, but don't hide your testimony. I get a lot of folk mad at me because I tell folk what they've been through. And I like I ain't supposed to tell. You know, Reverend Smith, he tell everything. Don't tell him nothing, girl. He don't keep nothing. He ain't supposed to keep it. Not when God has done something great in your life and you still ashamed about what he's forgiven you for. I'm not ashamed about what he's done for me because if he hadn't have done it, guess what? I'll still be in my mess. I'm glad his light exposed me. I'm glad his light uncovered my sin. I'm glad his light showed my faults because every hurt turned into a hallelujah and every triumph, Lord have mercy, that I've ever had has come out of a struggle spiritually. My brothers and my sisters, you've got to have enough confidence to share God on purpose. And you do that not by telling folk, you do it by living. You do it by living, living saved, knowing that you saved. Let me t let, let you in on the secret. You live what you believe. Now you check your record. Because if you believe that you can continue to do what you're doing, drink up all the alcohol, party up all on Saturday night and show up on a Sunday morning thinking that God hadn't been moved yet, you didn't move it. You just can't do what you want to do and claim to be a Christian. Either you are a Christian or you are a carnal Christian or you are a natural believer. A natural individual is someone that is not connected spiritually. 
born into the natural, you will never be able to understand the spiritual living natural. But then there's the carnal believer. The carnal believer is the believer that works out of the flesh. When you think about carnival, we think about carnival, we think about uh, 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 animals that eat meat. They're carnivores. And so when we think about carnal, that's a person that is fleshy or physical. Lord have mercy. So God, a man, may have intervened into that person's life, but he doesn't or she doesn't live their life out of the spirit. They live their life out, a man, of the flesh. But then that's the spiritual individual. That's the one that lives their lives out of the spirit. Let me tell you a spiritual person. A spiritual person is not necessarily the one that shouts all the time at church. Preach Reverend Smith in here. That don't make you spiritual because the devil can mimic anything that we do. What makes you spiritual is that your life is aligned to the principles and knowledge of the word of God. That you live your life in lieu of his love and his life in respect. What did Christ do? He always pointed to other folk more so than himself. Don't be a selfish Christian. Learn to render unto God what is due to God. Not just that. Amen. Excuse me. Amen. We are to, we are saved to shine. Maybe you didn't know that. We are saved to shine. What do you think God saved you for? To bring glory and honor to his name. Amen. We ought to also be faithful uh, be a, a, a with our light should be a courageous light. Faithful is courageous light. It's foolish to conceal your light, but it's faithful to have courageous light. Courageous light in verse fifteen it says, "Nor do a a a, a they light a lamp and put it under a basket." but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who is in the house. You ought to lift your light because your light works like a flame. Listen to this. Your light like a flame shines regardless to recognition of where it is placed. I remember I lit a candle one time in a message that I preached called Candle Christians, amen, and I had a candle here, amen, and you know what? It didn't matter if I had the candle up here or if I put it down on the floor. The candle, all the candle did was shine. How I got some help in how? It doesn't matter where you are placed in life. And that's what I want to say to you because the people in this sanctuary, you are placed in different places in life. I don't know what goes on in your life when you get home because that's your private place. But wherever God has directed you or placed you, all he wants you to do is shine. It's just shine. Lord have mercy. Shine regardless to size or shape. Have you ever seen a flame on the candle? Sometimes there's a big flame and then sometimes there's a little, little, little bitty flame. It doesn't matter how you are shaped spiritually. It doesn't matter how you are shaped. You don't have to be a big, big preacher to be on stage. You don't have to always have the mic every Sunday. You don't always have to be the one doing something. Lord have mercy. It doesn't matter where you are. God says, I see you and I know you regardless to how you shape, regardless to what size you are, regardless to what you're going through. You may be, amen, going through health battles. God said, why don't you shine in the midst of your health battle? You may be going through all kinds of things. It could be bereavement, but you can still shine in the midst of bereavement. 
That's what David did. David lost a loved one and everybody was so ooh, afraid to even talk to the king because he was in his, what they may deem, his bereaved state of mind. And he, got, he woke, walked out of his room, pulled back the curtains and let the sun in. And he said, you know what? I can't. My son can't come to me, but I can go to him. So I can get ready to go see the ones I've lost. So he has taken an attitude of gratitude to what God has ever done for his life. And I'm saying to you, wherever you are, can you give God some gratitude? For at least you got to this state, your, this state of mind. Recognize it. Notice, now, no, notice all the hell you've been through this week. Notice all the anguish that you've been through this past week. Notice the stuff that you came out. Wait a minute. Let's go back to last month when you didn't think you was going to make it. But look, you didn't got God then gave you another month. It, that's, a, that's, that's ought to be an attitude of gratitude right there. That I'm still here. I may be hurting. I may not have the money I want. I may not have the job I want. I may not even have the family I want. But guess what? I'm still here. And if I'm living, I got a soul and I got a chance. I got an understanding that God is who he is. And guess who he is? I don't know what he is to you. But what he is to me, he is God. The creator of all things. He's changed my life. He made my life better. I'm better because of the God that I serve. I may not get what I want. I may not smile all the time. But there's a God down on the inside that makes things better for me. And I thank, I'm thankful that he didn't answer all the prayers that I prayed for. Because the Bible teaches that we don't know what to pray for. And sometimes we pray things into our lives that bring demise discomfort and destruction to our lives but God know us and don't allow those things to happen because of his great strength and power he allows us and I'm shining regardless to the shape that I'm in and you know something about a, about a light and a flame go home and do this don't 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 burn the house down Light that candle. There's something about a flame. You can turn that flame sideways. Guess what? Woo! That flame gonna go up. You can turn it upside down. That flame gonna come out from under and point upward. And I wanna tell you today, it doesn't matter how God has shaped your life. You ought to be blamed. You ought to be flaming upward. I don't care if he laid you down. Put your flame upward. I don't care if you turn your sideways. Put your flame upward. I don't care if you don't understand. Let God take you higher. Because there can be no flame without a burning. Everybody know that. You got a flame that's got to be a burning. You see the, you see the flame on the wick of the candle. There's a shining going on. And it's sensitive. I know it moved back and forth, but that thing is sensitive. But something else is going on. What is it, Smith? In order for the flame to keep burning, there's got to be, in order for the flame to keep shining, there's got to be a burning of the wax and the wick. And as we keep shining, I hope God is allowing us to burn off the world, burn off the things in our life that we are holding to that we don't need. Do you know when the Hebrew boys got into the fiery furnace? When they got into the fiery furnace, amen, they turned up the furnace hotter seven times than what it was. That the Bible says. And the key thing is that when they put them in, they saw four. I'm asking the question, if you don't mind, when did God get in the furnace? I don't know when he got in there, but I don't know when he got in there. I, I like to believe that if you're getting ready to go through a furnace situation, God is already in there before you get there. In fact, he's waiting on you to tell you, amen, the flame is not going to bother you. Come on in here. Let's just praise God while we are in the flame. And guess what happened? Look, you got something on you that the world put on you. We might as well burn that off. 
Anything that the world put on you will not stand in the, in the remnants of God. What we need to do is just believe and hold on to what God has already given us. The glory belongs to him. Are y'all still with me? Y'all really, y'all still with me, right? It's just now 11 o'clock, y'all. If I let you go now, y'all think it's a miracle, wouldn't you? <laughs> Somebody say, yeah. <laughs> Man, I want you to know all I want you to do is shine shine in the midst of this pandemic let your light shine before men that they might see your good works as I draw to a close I want you to know this number one shine in your motives shine in your choices shine in your business Shine in your thoughts. Shine in your conversations. Shine in your love. Shine in your conduct. Shine in your friendship. Shine in your service. Shine in your giving. Shine in your efforts. Shine, Lord, have mercy, in your manner. Shine. All God wants you to do is shine. This little light of mine. When you shine, it develops your character. It makes your decisions flow. And it makes peace abide in you. I'm at peace, even with COVID-19. Smith is at peace. I'm at peace because I'm at peace with God. If you're not at peace, then you're not at peace with God. The peace of God shall abide with us forever. It's the peace of God. It's not the trouble that we see. There are a lot of things that I won't change, but I know that I can't change them. So I'm, I'm at peace. There's a lot of things that I wish that Christians would do but I'm at peace. There's a lot of things that I wish that people would do with God. But it's wrong for me to make folk love a God that they said they already love. It's what mama used to say when the child runs and hugs and says, mama, I love you. And she said, you don't love me because I asked you to clean your room. And you hadn't done what I asked you to do. I asked you to wash the dishes. And you get an attitude. But yet you say you love me. Because when you love someone, you follow suit the things that God wants you to do. You know, if I wanted to go, go to the movies or play ball or go out with my friends, I'm going to say, make sure that kitchen clean, make sure that room you got. It's done. And then she asked her money to check your attitude. You didn't done what she told you to do. And then she hollered out something she didn't say. You take the trash out. You didn't say that. Come on back here. What you getting upset for? You better straighten yourself up. Or you be sitting here all evening long with me. I'm going to get the trash, mom. Okay. It's important. Why? Because what we do at home reflects on how we treat the God that we said we believe. How can we say we love God whom we never seen and hate our brother who we see every day? The door of the church is open. God bless you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want nothing but the best for you. And we pray, amen, that God's blessing will forever shine on you. My brothers and sisters, I'm in love with God and I'm loving you.